probably wouldn't think these two people had very much in common, would you? But according to David Oliver, a borderline personality disorder expert and researcher, both of these people most likely suffered from borderline personality disorder. Now, borderline personality disorder, a mental illness now known to have um, biological causes, is a serious condition that destroys lives and relationships. Today, I'm going to discuss with you first what borderline is and um, what experts think cause it and then tell you some things about people, some statistics about people who have it, and finally, some of the treatment options available for people who suffer from this disorder. To put it in its most simple terms, um, borderline is a disorder of mood regulation. So and until recently, it's been considered to be an untreatable disease. Doctors wouldn't even talk about it with patients who had it. To be considered borderline, you need to meet five of nine criteria that are outlined in the Diagnostics and Statistical <coughs> Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition. They use some pretty uh, heavy language. It's pretty hard to understand, so I'm going to use the language Dr. Roxandra and Edwards used on MedicineNet. It's pretty um, simple, so we can understand. First is unstable self-image, unstable relationships, unstable emotions that are stress-related, Desperate efforts to avoid being abandoned, even if that abandonment is imagined. Significant impulsivity, things like reckless driving, reckless sexual behavior, um, self-injury, use of substances. Um, recurring suicidal behaviors, attempts, or threats. Chronic feelings of emptiness. Inappropriate intense anger or difficulty controlling that anger when it happens. And transient stress-related paranoia or severe dissociation. Now that's kind of confusing. You might be wondering, what does all that mean? Well, I think Kira Van Gelder said it best in her memoir, The Buddha and the Borderline, when she said that first, we're highly sensitive to emotional stimuli, meaning we experience social dynamics, the environment, and our own inner states with an acuteness similar to having exposed nerve endings. Second, we respond more intensely and much more quickly than normal people. And third, we don't come back down from our emotions um, for a long time. Once the nerve has been touched, um, the sensations keep peaking. Shock waves of emotion that might last only moments in other people or a few minutes can keep going for hours or sometimes days. Um, so what causes this disorder? Experts believe it's kind of a combination of biology and environment. Now, the environment that you're raised in in early childhood has a, a big impact on your personality and how that develops. If you're raised in a home where there's a lot of abuse, neglect, or you're emotionally invalidated, chances are a lot higher that you'll develop borderline. But being raised in an abusive home all by itself is not enough to cause someone to be borderline. You have to have some underlining biology in place as well. So Dr. Wayne Fenton, who's a former Assistant Director of the National Institute on Mental Health, explains in the 2009 documentary, Back from the Edge, that new science has revealed physical differences in borderline brains that make it impossible for us to regulate our emotions effectively. In this image, I have um, normal or non-borderline brains and people with borderline um, being shown what's considered neutral stimulus. And people with borderline have what's considered an overactive fight or flight response. And you see in the normal people, there's really no um, activity in the fight or flight response. But in borderline patients with that same neutral stimulus, there's a lot of activity that's going on there. So um, not only do we have an overactive fight or flight response to things, we also have an underactive prefrontal cortex. 
Now, the prefrontal cortex is the part of your brain that controls higher order thinking, helps you self-soothe from distressing emotions, and controls your impulses. In a normal person under stress, this part of your brain becomes very active. But in a person with borderline, not so much. There's, there's a lot less activity there. <coughs> so not only do we go from zero to 60 just like that, we don't have any breaks. We can't slow ourselves down once we're on that uh, emotional highway and, and on that way. <laughs> um, so you might be wondering, you know, what kind of people, how many people out there have this disorder? Well, according to borderlinepersonalitydisorder.com, borderline affects about 14 million people in this country alone. Now to put that in some perspective, New York City has a population of just over 8 million people. Um, one of the most frightening aspects of borderline for people who, um, especially those who love someone with borderline, is the rate of suicide and self-injury. 10% of people with borderline eventually commit suicide. 55 to 85% self-injure with things like cutting, burning, hitting your head. And 33% of the suicides in this country have features of border, of youth suicides have features of borderline personality disorder. Now, what can people do if they're diagnosed with this disorder? I mean, like I said at the beginning, it was considered untreatable. But um, while there's no anti-borderline drug on the market, some borderlines have found um, relief by taking anti-anxiety or antidepressant drugs, but not everyone um, experiences relief from those things. Um, psychotherapy is very important, but you need to have a trained therapist. Um, traditional treatments can actually make someone with borderline worse. It can worsen their symptoms. The only proven treatment out there is something called dialectical behavior therapy. Um, this was designed by a woman named Dr. Marsha Linehan at the University of Washington. And the DBT teaches us um, coping skills, distress tolerance, and communication skills, among other things, to help us um, regulate our lives a little better. So while borderline is a very serious, very destructive, and sometimes fatal disorder, there is hope for us borderlines out there with dynamic therapies like DBT. Mary Zanarini of McLean Hospital in Massachusetts studied 290 people with borderline over 10 years and found at the end of her study that half of them had recovered from borderline. So now, rather than being the untreatable, unspeakable disorder, it's considered the good prognosis disorder. So now that you know some of the symptoms, if you think you or someone you know might have borderline, please seek help immediately. Do not diagnose yourself. I have some handouts here with um, the criteria listed again and some um, resources for anybody who might be interested. What's the main difference between someone with borderline personality and someone with a full-on personality disorder? Um, a borderline personality is a full-on personality disorder. It's got its name borderline because long time ago before they really understood it, they considered someone with a disorder to be on the borderline of neurosis and psychosis, okay. like didn't really fit. You had, it's considered a garbage can diagnosis in a lot yeah. of ways too. Yeah, okay. too. Okay. How do you come out with borderline topic? I'm sorry? How do you come out with borderline topic? With the topic? Yeah. It's, I'm, I have borderline personality. I was diagnosed when I was 16. Yes. For the, the treatments like dialectical behavioral therapy and uh, medication and all that, are those all um, treatments and therapies that you use? Um, medication doesn't work for me. It actually worsens my symptoms usually. Mm -hmm. um, but I used to do DBT and then I wasn't able to continue with the agency and I've just started with a deep, uh, borderline therapist more or less up, up in Chinatown. So get back to, to being better again. Oh, and how does this, this, how does this affect you on the day-to-day? -day? Oh, um, well, things like <laughs> yesterday, um, trying to have a conversation with my husband and f feeling like he doesn't understand things, like he'll say things that he doesn't realize, to me, feels like an emotional slap in the face. And to him, he's just saying like, hey, it's nice out today, right? So he, and then I have to, try and figure out whether or not people are being rude to me or whether or not I'm imagining that people are being rude. Like the brain scans, they were showing pictures of people's faces. Neutral faces, happy faces, um, fearful faces, and it's, it triggered the fight or flight response in all of the borderline patients, just to have someone with a neutral face looking at them. I know um, fight or flight's involved a lot with 